it was obvious that he was uh, a, a great athlete to sign. Uh, that uh, that anybody you talked to said this guy is going to be a great player. Uh, unfortunately, the other shoe company saw that as well. So where well, we don't get into the specifics of what we pay different athletes, the uh, the amount of money that it took to sign him at that time was two or three times as much as we'd paid anybody else in for uh, a basketball endorsement before. So there was some risk that way, but I think everybody thought that he was going to be a very good player. Michael Jordan has gone from a 20-year-old college kid who, when he negotiated his first Nike contract, all he wanted was a car. He said, just give me a car and I'll sign with you. And uh, they tried to tell him at Nike that, that he'd have a lot of money to buy a lot of cars and that he wouldn't have to worry about that. And yet he still wanted a car. And so one of the guys in the Nike negotiations had a little toy car and he, he rolled it over on the table. And Michael still didn't quite get what they were trying to say. And he's gone from that kind of naive 20-year-old college student to the multi, multi, multi-million dollar businessman he is today. Michael Jordan is a conglomerate. I never wore Nike shoe until I signed with him. Uh, and I wasn't as enthused to sign with him as people might have known. Uh, because of my involvement with Converse, which I had to wear Converse in, during the University of North Carolina years, and Adidas, which I, um, was one of the companies that I actually wanted to wear the shoe. And when Nike brought me out west uh, uh, to go over the proposal that they were making for me, which was giving me my own shoe, my uh, the option for me to create my own shoe and have input on it, and, and things could not happen without my uh, uh, my approval of it. I felt that was a great opportunity for me, but I really like Adidas. So I went back to Adidas, hearing what Nike had proposed to me, and say, if you match it, I go with Adidas. And they actually never matched the deal. They couldn't even come close. So it made my decision very easy. So I went with it. It went with Nike, and they centered everything around myself and gave me the option to create, you know, with the basketball shoe, to put my input give me my give my input on on a basketball shoe in terms of the way that I like it and from that point on it it, it just kind of rolled and what I expect I meant the shoe and if they didn't give me that option um, I wouldn't let I wouldn't put my name on it even though it may be a Nike shoe but I wouldn't put my name on it and I felt my name on that shoe gives me the right to put my input on it I get the veto power in terms of the, the campaigns itself, uh, the marketing of, of it and ideas of it. And um, I listen to all different uh, suggestions from all different uh, agencies, mostly the ones that Nike works with. And if it's something that I feel that is it's a part of my personality or I can adapt or adjust to, I go with it, uh, knowing that Nike's going to do it first class. And uh, all the commercials that we have done uh, has a little bit of my personality involved with that. And that's due to the, them giving me the option to veto it or not do it. And it's the same way with my shoes. Yo, Mars Blackman here with my main man, Michael Jordan. Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Is it the vicious stumps? No, Mars. Is it the haircut? No, Mars. Is it the shoes? No, Mars. Is it the extra long shorts? No, Mars. Is the shoes it, right? Nah. Is it the short socks? No, Mars. Money's gotta be the shoes! Shoes, 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 shoes. That's it. To own the only other machine other than the one that Michael Jordan is going to take home with him. We're looking for $17,000. We have $17,000. We've got $17 over here. Now we're looking for $18. Do I hear $18? $18 in the back there. Now we're looking for $19. Do I hear $19 down in the front over here? we got $18 in the back over there. We're looking for $19. Is there $19,000? There's only two of them existing in the world. You can have it personalized any way you want. You can play all sorts of games, have all sorts of fun. You can program anything you want in there. James Earl Jones is in there. He says something at the end when you get, like, lost. And then there's Barkley and Godzilla and all that kind of stuff. 19, do I hear 19 down in the front over here? We got 18 in the back over there. We're looking for 19. Is there 19? We've got 20,000 down here going once. 20,000 going twice. Sold for $20,000. Congratulations.
this year the Michael Jordan Foundation uh, sets out to do a huge black tie dinner, which is our main fundraising event of the year in which Michael is the host. And the primary purpose of the foundation is to work with various children's charities. It's fun in several different ways and the fact that there are various projects. So that's an exciting thing. There's also a private dinner that people this year will be paying $8,000 to have dinner with Michael and his family, which is uh, held to 150 people, so that way Michael has time to go and visit with everyone. There's also a suite, which is rented out for the evening, which is $15,000 a person, and uh, eight people will. I think the price Michael Jordan has to pay is incredibly high. I think that he can't go anywhere without being instantly recognizable. He can't even go into a movie theater uh, and watch a movie in the dark. ...to be anything special, except for what they do physically. Who turned them into gods? I don't think a lot of sports writers necessarily did it. It's now big business. And the cereal companies, the sneaker companies, the leagues, the teams, they are the ones pounding this stuff into people, on television, mostly, that these, these are gods. They're selling their, their sport. They're trying to make money off not just the athletic ability, but that these people are something special. It's almost as a moral uh, strength that these men can show us how to live. If we could only be like Jordan, that our lives would be better. And I say we've got to get off that because it's just not true. We've got to live our own lives and admire them as athletes. I would not like to have Michael Jordan lifestyle. I don't think that's a good feeling. Michael Jordan, he has charisma by himself. He's very calm, you know. To me, this is my opinion. And, you know, he's just so, he's, he's a good, he's a good player. You know, he, he's unstoppable. He's, he finds a way to win. He's a winner, so. I feel that if I can play like him or somewhere close to him, I'm